Welcome to part four of four ways to manage form state in React. Today we're going to talk about final form, and this is in my mind one of the best ways to manage your form state in React. I strongly recommend that you watch the previous video, part three about Redux form, because in my mind final form is kind of the evolution the next step of, of Redux form. So we'll be reusing a couple of things that we uh, built before, but even if you didn't watch it, it's still easy to understand. I previously mentioned already that final form is also built by Eric Rasmussen, um, the creator of Redux form. So to me, it feels like he put a lot of that experience that he uh, got from, from Redux form, from uh, both building it and, and using it and put it into final form. So I label this part for final form, the final form tool that you'll ever need. I don't know if this was the intention behind the name, but it certainly feels like it's a pretty mature tool and um, it has taken care of a lot of the things that we criticized about Redux form. So let's dive right into it. As always, maybe before we go to the form here, we have our empty form as always. And if we look at the code, it looks like this very simple React code that we had before as well. So the first major difference to Redux form is, remember when I introduced Redux form, I said that I had already set it up. I had set up Redux and I had set up the Redux form form reducer. So I'd done the central setup. With final form, I didn't prepare anything. And that's not because I'm lazy, but because we don't have to prepare anything. We can just start using final form right away without any kind of central setup. For that, we just have to import form. And then we'll also need field. You'll remember field from uh, Redux form from React final form. So I guess not preparing anything is a bit of a lie. I did install React final form, just npm installed it. And it does have a pure dependency on final form. So the React part is scoped out into a separate package because final form also works with other uh, front end frameworks like Vue.js, for example. Cool. So now that we have that form, we can just wrap our entire component in this form. And by wrapping, I mean that we add a render method here. And render method is just this inline component, which then in turn takes everything we had before. So let's move everything we had in here. And that is currently breaking because I'm missing the closing curly brackets here. And still not working because I'm missing parentheses. Cool. So there we go. So let's go back to our browser and see, okay, we still have a, a form, but we haven't done anything in here yet. So similar to on uh, how we did it on Redux form, we need to wrap our input field in a uh, field component. So let's do exactly that. Same as before, field takes the name. So this is our customer ID here. And then field takes a component. And here we again have this render input helper component. And that I will just copy from uh, the previous exercise. So let me go for the Redux form here and just grab all of this and copy it here. So again, this render input, just the helper component, just gets input and meta out of the uh, props and puts it into our component. Notice that this render component works exactly the same way as it did with Redux form. So if you're migrating from Redux form to uh, final form, that's pretty easy because stuff will already, already work. So let's go to the browser and sorry, that was not the browser. This is the browser and let's see what happens. Notice it's currently not working, huh? So that's interesting. Okay, let's see our console. That's always good in JavaScript to see if we have any errors in the console. And we do. Field must be, so let me see if I can zoom in a bit here so you can actually see this. That was too much. Field must be used inside of React Final Form component. So this one can be a bit confusing because I think we did use field inside of React Final Form component. However, this seems to be a follow-up error from this error. No on submit function specified. Okay. So it doesn't seem to be a valid form because we don't have an on submit function. But that is something we can easily fix. Let's also get the on submit from our previous example. So here we just had a very simple on submit function. Of course, I wouldn't have to copy all of this. I could just export them in the other files, but I want to have these um, examples isolated. So I'm just using copy paste here. Cool. So now we can just put this on submit into this form here on submit. Cool. If we go back to the browser, close the console again, because it's taking up a lot of screen space here. Our field is now working. However, I don't think our form is complete. Let's see what happens if I hit 
submit, we still get this hard page reload. And this is exactly the same way as we did in, in uh, Redux form. Remember in Redux form, we had a higher order component that would inject props. Here it's technically not a higher order component, it's just a wrapping component. But nevertheless, through this render uh, component, we have the ability to inject props into this inline component here. So here we're getting a handle submit function exactly the same way, not exactly the same way, but very, very similar to how we did it on Redux form. And we can pass this into our on submit standard JavaScript event handler for uh, the form element. So let's put handle submit in here, save this, go to the browser and see the best customer ever. And there we go, customer ID equals the best customer ever. Cool, so now we seem to have a working form, but of course we don't have all the benefits yet that we had with a Redux form. So especially validation. Validation was very cool because we could uh, immediately use this to determine if the form is valid or not. So let us just get quickly these two validation functions that we had before. We had one required that would error. This field is required if it's not set. And we had one called allowed names that would um, forbid the name, forbidden name. How creative. So let's go up here and just copy paste this here. Cool. So let's start with a single one. Let's go down here and say validate again, same syntax, same API, um, same signature as uh, with Redux form. So very, very easy if you're already familiar with Redux form. And here we want to put the first one required. Okay, so in order to see an effect, we should now actually we should already see an effect because we print our error message if there is an error. Okay, cool. So let's see if that is true. Let's go here, touched, cool, field is required. However, we're not graying out the um, button yet, but that is something we can easily do as well. So we can just take this render method here where we pass in our props, or actually the props are always passed in, but where we destructure the props that we're interested in. So in this case, we're interested in valid. You could also just use invalid, which is the opposite. In fact, let's, let's try that out. Let's try invalid instead of valid. And then let's go to our button and put disabled equals invalid. Cool, I hope this actually works. I haven't tried this out before. Always only use valid. Yes, it does. So invalid is just the opposite of valid. So as soon as we type something here, our button is valid. So now we're pretty close to where we were before in our uh, Redux form example without having the requirement for Redux, without having any central setup. So all the setup that this form needs is actually in this file, which is really, really cool. Uh, but one thing is still missing, and that is the combination of uh, two validators. So before I simply wrap this in an array and then put the other one here, which was called allowed names. And let's see what happens if we try this again. So I actually expected an error now. Oh. I'm not seeing an error yet. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on <laughs> I'm on the, the button here, not on the validator field. Cool, so let's go back here and wrap this one. Uh, wrap this one in an array and put the other one here, which was called allowed names. Cool. So now this is the error that I was hoping for. Well, not hoping for, but I was expecting it. We're getting type error, validator is not a function. So if you just look at the code here, this can be a bit cryptic, but actually if you take this uh, message literal, it is it is a very good uh, hint of what is going wrong. Validator is not a function, which is entirely correct because we passed in an array and an array is not a function. So there doesn't seem to be any magic to just pass in many validators at a time. However, combining validators is actually something that's super simple. And in fact, it might be good to be in control of it because you could do all kinds of different things. You could only show one error message. You could concatenate your error message, all these, these kind of things. So let's build a very, very simple function that composes the error message. Let's call it composed validators. And then of course these array brackets have to turn into round brackets. Cool, composed validators doesn't exist yet. So let's build it. So what do we need for this? Let's get a bit into functional programming. So compose validators is a function that should take any amount of validators. So any amount of anything is always the spread operator in JavaScript. Okay, so we're taking in an arbitrary amount of validators. What are we returning from this function? So we don't wanna return a value straight away 
because we don't know whether this field is valid or not at compile time. Technically, there's no compile time in JavaScript, but right now when I write this code, I don't know what the user will put in. So instead of returning a value, we need to return a function, even though this is already a function. So again, this is a higher order function that returns a function. Cool, so the signature of this inner function is something that takes a value and returns something. And what this something is, we really don't know yet. So. Let me just put a function body here for now. This can be written a bit more concise. You'll see that in a second. So for the inner function, what do we do? Well, because this validators is now a list, a list of validators, because we use the spread operator. So now we're getting a list of validators. We can use any sort of array function that we have. And the one that we want to have whenever, whenever in a functional programming, you have an array and you kind of want to condense it into a single value, most of the time, what you want is the reduce function. So let's use that here. In fact, condense is probably not the best word. What we want to do is reduce all the values into a single value. So let's call validators, uh, validators dot reduce. Reduce, the signature of reduce uh, takes two arguments. For oh, by the way, I need to put a return here because I put, put the um, curly brackets around it. You'll also see in a second that we can just omit them uh, if we just have a single return value. But let's get back to our reduce function. So reduce takes two arguments. And I want to start with the second argument because that's much simpler. And this is the initial value. So what would the initial value be if we don't have any validator run? Well, this can only be undefined because as remember from uh, the Redux form tutorial, undefined is how Redux form or also final form um, says that there is no error. So it's not an empty string or null, it's it's undefined. Then the second part, which is actually the first argument, is a tiny bit more complex, but still very easy. It's uh, the reducer um, function. And for this, we need to specify, um, or we get past two arguments and we need to specify the reduced value. So a common signature in here is something like the accumulated value and the current value, and then we return a function. So I'll get to a couple of better names in a second, but um, let's see for now. So for this function, this time I'm not writing the brackets, but I'm just putting the return value uh, indirectly. In the first iteration, we actually just want to call our validator with the value. So this will work for uh, the first one. But then think of the, the second iteration. So now we already have a val an error from the uh, previous round, which is in our accumulated value here. And when I say we have an error, we don't know. This could be undefined or this could be an error message. So if we already have an error message, let's just return that. If we don't have one, let's run the next validator. So this means we now have a compose validators that returns as soon as we have a single error message. There's plenty other ways to build this, of course. We could also concatenate the error strings, all kinds of things. This is just one very simple uh, but working implementation. So when I claim working, let's try it out. Let's see. Cool, field is required. Let's put in forbidden name, also works. Awesome. So um, I said that this, this accumulated and uh, current is a very uh, common structure on reduce. That's why I wanted to use it. But in fact, we could make this a bit more explicit of what's happening here. Because what we accumulate is our error. So this is the accumulated error, or actually just error. And what we have for current here is the current validator, or simply the validator. So here we return either the error, if there is one, or we run the validator again. And I think if you write it like this, even though it's um, all this, this functional magic that can seem so difficult if you're not familiar with it, I think if you name it like this, it actually becomes very obvious what's happening. And then we can also, of course, um, remove these curly brackets here, and then we can also remove the return, put this in the next line, put this in line again. And I think what we have now is rather easy to read, and you might have learned a bit about functional JavaScript. If this was too much functional programming here right now, please let me know. I'm very, very happy to do detailed videos um, on functional programming, but of course, this video being about final form, this should be all for now, and if you don't really understand what's going on here, uh, you can also just copy this. In fact, I think now that we refactored this, this matches exactly what you would find in the examples of final form. So this video wouldn't, of course, be um, complete without our conclusions, which huh, I didn't put a link here or deleted the link. Okay, um, 
let me just, I think for the conclusions, I have them conclude. No, I think that was called summary. Cool, there we go, because I did prepare them. <laughs> so uh, for a final form, let's go through a couple of advantages. I've already stressed this, there is no need to install Redux or any central component in your app. As long as you're using React, that's fine. And that's really cool. It works without previous setup. So this is very similar, but it's not the same. So here, I mean, we don't need something like Redux. Here, I mean, we don't need to install something like the Redux form reducer, but we just use it right away in our form. The API, I think, is as good as Redux form. I, I didn't want to write it's the same because it's slightly different, but I think it's it's just different semantics, different style, but it's, it's as good, as powerful, if not better. It's uh, very powerful, so this, this is what we get out of it. It, uh, we have the same features as in Redux form. We have validation. We can dynamically render our form. There's plenty more that we can do. It will feel very familiar with you if you've used a Redux form before. So this only applies if you if you sort of need an argument to should I really um, migrate from Redux form to uh, Final form. And it is this is something that we haven't talked about at all in this video, but I just wanted to, to let you know that you can actually optimize your form to only re-render the parts that really need to be re-rendered. And this is done using subscriptions. So you can read more about that on the um, final form documentation. And it's very, very well optimizable. So you don't have unnecessary uh, re-render cycles. So even complex forms can be very, very fast and very efficient. And it's lightweight, it uh, doesn't have any dependencies other than, um, yeah, React Final Form depends on Final Form. But other than that, there are no dependencies and it's very, very small, that's really cool. So disadvantages, I really had a hard time coming up with any disadvantages and I think the one that I can see is if you're migrating from Redux Form, it might not be as straightforward as just simply replacing it because the API is slightly different. It's not, not too different, but a, a, a tiny bit different. So there's some migration effort involved, but this really shouldn't keep you from using it if you're not using Redux Form yet. So when should you use Final Form? When a controlled component becomes too verbose or cumbersome, Ver I combined the word verbose and or into verbose cumbersome. So this is supposed to mean verbose or too cumbersome, um, which means, yeah, basically a controlled component, the idiomatic React way, think of tutorial number two, is uh, very good, but it doesn't really scale too well with larger forms. So as soon as you feel like you need something better, I would recommend final form as the way to go. So in general, also when just when you need good validation support, but also when optimizing for speed is critical, as mentioned before, you can use subscriptions to get the form really blazing fast. So this was my mini series, four ways to manage form state in React. I hope you've liked it. I hope you've learned something. I tried to introduce other concepts as well. So there's a bit of functional stuff going on here and there, explaining how React works in general. If there's anything that you feel like you would like to have uh, deeper videos on or, or deeper knowledge on more tutorial videos, please let me know. I'm very, very happy to make these kind of videos. As I said before, I love React and this is really uh, much fun because lately I haven't been working a lot with React, been doing a lot of uh, backend development. So this is really fun for me to get into those again. So let me know when you're interested in more of those. There are, of course, other ways to manage a form state. There's a tool that I've personally never used, but has um, very good reviews. That's called Formic, I think. I've I've never used it. So um, if you feel like I'm missing out by only mentioning the other four and not mentioning this one, please let me know. I have to do some research on it because I've never tried it out. But um, yeah, I'm not claiming that uh, this is complete in any way. There might be 12 ways. I really don't know, um, but I just showed you four of those ways and I hope you enjoyed them and let me know if you, we have to add a fifth way. Thanks for watching and see you soon on another mini series.